If you are in need of a substantial amount of power for the subwoofers in your vehicle, this right here is a great solution, the JL Audio RD1500-1. This amplifier has some very unique features that allow it to be a great choice for your high power subwoofer application. What are those features and what can we expect from this amplifier? Hey guys, I'm Mark from the YouTube channel Car Audio Fabrication here today on behalf of JL Audio to show you guys this amplifier. Let's dive in and take a look. So let's start things off with an unboxing and first of all, let's talk about the specs on this amplifier. Based on the naming, this is a 1500 watt mono block amp. At 14.4 volts and less than 1% total harmonic distortion, we can expect 750 watts RMS at 4 ohms, 1000 watts RMS at 3 ohms, and check this out guys, this is unique, 1500 watts RMS at both 1 ohm and 2 ohms. In fact, this rating is highlighted right here on the front of the box being at 1 or 2 ohms. This flexibility is unique because it allows us to look at this amplifier as sort of an investment. Think about it this way, the first system that we put this amplifier in, we might wire the subwoofers so they present a 2 ohm load to the amplifier, but let's say in the future we switch subwoofers or we change something or we even use this amplifier in a different build, maybe we can only wire the subwoofers in our new build down to 1 ohm, rather than having to switch amplifiers and reconfigure our system design, we can still use this amplifier at either of those options. And guys, keep in mind, JL Audio is a reputable company. The ratings that they have here on the packaging, this amplifier is definitely going to do at least those ratings, if not more. On the back of the packaging, they've given us the dimensions of the amplifier. This amp is a little over 18 inches long or 458 millimeters. It's just under seven inches deep, which is 177 millimeters and its height is 2.125 inches or 54 millimeters. The RD amplifiers are a class D design, but these have JL Audio's proprietary Next D switching technology. This technology results in a clean, powerful, and reliable sound from this class D amp. If we open up the packaging here, of course the amplifier is in there, but on top we have the JL Audio logo. This comes separate intentionally, that way we can orient it depending on how the amplifier is mounted in our system. They give us a couple of Allen keys for securing the different wiring onto the amplifier. They give us the owner's manual, and then of course we have the amplifier itself. I know which way I want this emblem to be in my install, so I'm going to get that secured on. And let's use one of the included Allen keys here to remove these two screws on top of the amplifier, which allows us to remove this cover plate. With high-end amplifiers like the RD series, you're gonna notice little things. As an example, you can see that these screws here that hold this cover plate on, JL has opted to add a little retention washer on the inside there. That makes sure that we don't lose these screws. They don't fall off. They stay right here with the cover. Also right away, I noticed that on the back side of this cover, there's a nice rubber piece. This gives us a nice fit between these two different hard surfaces. That way you don't have to worry about them vibrating against each other. And also a nice little detail, you can see they've cut out the spots where the different switches and controls are here. That way there's no interference between the rubber and those. The cover of course also gives us the functionality of protecting any of these adjustments from being tampered with. And you'll also notice that the cover goes above all those set screws that allow us to connect the wiring. This keeps everything really nice and clean. Now it's definitely worth noting that there are several other RD series amplifiers that JL Audio has. For the monoblock subwoofer amplifiers, there's of course the 1500-1, but there's also the RD500-1 and the RD1000-1. So no matter how much subwoofer power you need, there's a good solution in this line. Also in this lineup are the RD400-4, that's a four channel amplifier, and then this amp right here, this is the RD900-5. As I'm sure you've guessed, this is a five channel amplifier. This gives us four channels of output for our mids and highs, and then a dedicated subwoofer channel. So no matter what your system design is, there's likely a good solution in the RD lineup for you. The subwoofer amps and the mids and highs amps in this series, they all look very similar, which is nice so that you can have a nice consistent look throughout your install. I really like the look of this. It has this kind of brushed black metal finish on this piece and on this piece here. The design elements of all this detail up here gives it a nice refined finish. 
And guys, wait until you see this light turn on. We're gonna do that now because we gotta hook this up to power. I wanna go through the different settings with you guys. Let's get this connected. To do our simulated installation of this amplifier so I can show you guys all the features, I have this right here. This is essentially a car audio system outside of the vehicle. You can see that it has a car audio head unit that's powering two different sets of speakers and it and the amplifier are going to be powered with this car battery. I've got the RCA signal coming out of this head unit going into the amplifier, and I also have a remote turn on lead coming from this head unit telling the amp to turn on. To install this amplifier, you're of course going to start with mounting it in the vehicle using the four different mounting locations. Next, we're going to connect our 12 volt constant and our ground. Now, JL Audio recommends a two gauge or larger size wire on these connections. I'm using just four gauge because we're not gonna be turning this up all the way. I'm just simulating it turning on for you guys. Now, I've connected a remote turn on lead. This way, the amplifier knows to turn on when the head unit is on, but you actually don't have to use this. That's because if you look at this switch right here for the turn on mode, there are three different options that we can choose from. The first, REM, stands for remote. That's when we have our remote lead connected. The second option is DC offset. What that means is if we are connected to the high level signal, in other words, the speaker level signal in a factory car audio system, and we're using that to bring signal in on these connections here, when it detects that DC offset, when you turn on the OEM system, the amplifier will turn on. The final option is signal sensing. In this option, the amplifier is looking for a full range signal coming in from the high level input on these inputs here. Definitely pay attention to this though. The offset option and the signal sensing option are only when you have a high level signal coming in. What I mean by that is right now, since we're using an aftermarket head unit, this is considered a low level signal on the RCA connections. But if we're installing into an OEM sound system, we can use JL Audio's RCA speaker wire adapter in order to adapt one of the factory speaker level signals into RCAs and into the amp. So understanding whether you're using a low level signal or a high level signal will also help you determine where we should set the input voltage switch. In this case, I'm using a low level signal, so I'm gonna use the low setting. Now a few more details here on the inputs. These are differential balanced inputs, which gives you a lot of flexibility for how we set up the system, but it also makes sure that the signal coming in is completely noise free. You'll also notice there's a set of pre-outs here. This allows you to run signal to another separate amplifier. And what's really cool about what JL Audio did with these pre-outs is they've made it so that whatever signal you have coming in, it's not affected by whatever you do here on the amplifier. In other words, if you have a full range signal coming in, you're going to get a full range signal coming out. And even cooler, if the input voltage is set to high, if we're using a high level signal from an OEM system, it actually attenuates the pre-out section. This way we have more of a line level output coming out of the amp. The next connection to make right here is for the RBC-1, that's JL Audio's remote level control. Again, JL has been super smart about how they design this circuitry. If you are using this remote level control, it only acts as a volume attenuator. In other words, if you turn the knob all the way down, it's zero output, but if you turn it all the way up, it just acts as if there was no control plugged in at all. In other words, however you set the input sensitivity on this amplifier is going to be the max setting. As long as the input sensitivity is set correctly, you're not going to risk going past that value by using the knob. The final connections we need to make are these right here. These are, of course, our speaker wires going to our subwoofer. Now, this question always comes up, why are there four connections? Do you have to power two subwoofers with this? Is doing you know, a negative and a positive, is that bridging the amp? The answer to those questions is no. This positive and this positive are tied together internally and the two negatives are also tied together internally. All that this is doing on this mono single channel output is just giving us more spots to connect the wiring. So I'm going to disconnect the subwoofer for now so that I can run you guys through some of the additional features here. Let's get this powered on. So the first thing I notice when powering up the RD1500 slash one is this light right here. This has a really cool design aesthetic to it. It's not just one solid piece. You can see there's kind of like this grid pattern in here. It looks really cool. Now this light isn't just for show though, this actually will tell us status of the amplifier. When we first power up the amplifier, the light will be red for about half a second. The light should then change to blue and stay blue as long as everything is good with the amp. 
If the amplifier is driven too hard and it exceeds its operating temperature though, this light will change to red and the output will mute. If the light changes back and forth between blue and red, it means that there is an overcurrent condition. So it's really cool that this light also gives us a status report of the amplifier. So let's get our amplifier set up with these different settings here. The first is the low Z switch. Like I mentioned earlier, this amplifier can be ran at one ohm or two ohms, but we need to let the amplifier know. If we're using two ohms or above for the final impedance of our subwoofers, we wanna have this over on the two side. And if we're using between one and two ohms, we want this over on the one side. So we have that set, now let's set our input sensitivity. We'll start with once again, making sure that we don't have any speakers connected to the amp. Next, we wanna make sure any processing or any bass boost or anything of that nature on our source unit is disabled. We'll start with having the input voltage switch set to low, and if we were to have the clipping light light up even when the input sensitivity is at its lowest value, in that case, we would probably wanna set the switch to high. We're gonna set the source unit at three quarters volume, or in this case, I know the max unclipped volume of this head unit, so I'm gonna set it to that setting. And we also want a test tone playing on our source. If we're using a subwoofer, we're gonna use something like 40 or 50 hertz. And if this is for a mids and highs amplifier, we want a thousand hertz. Now I can slowly increase the input sensitivity dial until that light illuminates. At which point I'm just going to back off ever so slightly. And just in case you were wondering, I found that the onboard clipping light lights up at the same time as the popular distortion detecting tool. We now have the input sensitivity properly set and remember that if need be, we can always even turn it down to level match the rest of the system. The final two settings we can adjust are the bass boost and the low pass crossover. Bass boost is essentially a single band equalizer centered at 45 Hertz that allows us to add extra bass. And the low pass crossover is a 12 dB per octave crossover. It allows us to set where we want the base information to stop going to our subwoofer. This is adjustable from 50 Hertz all the way up to 500 Hertz. Of course, it's going to depend on your system. In this case, we'll just leave it set at 80. So now that we have everything connected and properly adjusted, we could finalize the install by adding the cover plate. Boom, just like that. So now we can do a bit of a test listen. Now a disclaimer right up front, I don't have a subwoofer handy on the test bench here that can handle the full 1500 watts RMS output from this amplifier. So we're definitely gonna take it a bit easy on this subwoofer, but we're definitely going to be able to get this subwoofer moving. Let's take a listen. So this amplifier is definitely a beast. I had to be super careful not to damage this subwoofer. Along with having a sub amp with all the other RD options in the lineup, you could very easily use this line of amplifiers for a full system design. If you'd like to learn more about the RD lineup of amplifiers, check out the link down in the video description. Once again, I'm Mark from the YouTube channel Car Audio Fabrication. On behalf of JL Audio, thank you guys for tuning in and watching.